Hey guys, it's Danny with Words Are Matter here to weigh in on our weird, wonky world. I got a text yesterday from a girlfriend who actually first connected 20 years ago through Kundalini Yoga, back when Golden Bridge was on third and we were both doing Seva in exchange for classes and it was another time and it was awesome. <clears throat> Apparently a new tell-all book has come out about Yogi Bhajan and I haven't read it and I don't know the specifics, but it alleges that there was sexual misconduct. People who knew him had their own experience and my girlfriend has decided that she is no longer invested in Kundalini Yoga. She will no longer practice Kundalini Yoga. She no longer wants anything to do with Kundalini Yoga. You know, this has come up a lot over the past few years and I've held my tongue I don't know why, probably because the pushback I receive for opening my mouth takes some time to process and clear and <laughs> release from my nervous system slash organs. But Kundalini Yoga was working really well for her for 20 years. Like the system itself, she found value in. And then on the flip side of hearing this secondhand information, and I'm not saying that the information isn't true, I don't know. She decided that it, it invalidated the efficacy of the entire system. And I had something similar happen to me when I met a new friend who was telling me that he was into Ashtanga yoga. And I said, oh, I've been practicing Ashtanga for years. I learned study with Patabi Joyce back in the old Shala in Mysore. And, you know, a lot of allegations have come out against Patabi Joyce. And my experience with Patabi Joyce, and I, I practice with him on several occasions over many, many years, I did not have those issues with him. I experienced him as kind and loving and a great teacher to me. And this is not to discount other people's experiences. Anyway, this came out and my friend was like, oh good, so how do you feel about the practice? Because I was having misgivings about practicing Ashtanga in light of what I had heard. So it, it's consistent now. First of all, there are these spiritual teachers who we put on pedestals. And that's really the issue, right? That we expect them to be superhuman and to have transcended the biological imperative and the primal urges that have kept our species alive for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And to somehow have transcended every single human flaw, foible, shadow, and be 100% perfect all of the time. And when that doesn't happen, we flip out and then discount their entire body of work. So. Let's put a pin in that and come back to that. What I wanna to talk to first is the discounting of these bodies of work. Like is Rosemary's Baby not a good movie because Roman Polanski was convicted of sexual misconduct? No, but now we have people who all of a sudden Michael Jackson, the entirety of his body of work is supposed to be canceled if you're following a certain ideology. All of a sudden those aren't good songs anymore. And also please keep in mind how many of these accusations are coming along after the people have died. And this is not to say that the accusations are not correct. I just find it kind of suspect and weird when these people can no longer speak for themselves and then their whole legacies are completely destroyed in the face of their humanity. So I've been in the deep in the yoga community since the 90s. And I will tell you that Every yoga teacher that you know is a human being. <laughs> and, you know, it, it gets fuzzy when we're working that closely and the bodies are coming together and they're super sweaty and, you know, we're, we're in these sort of altered states. Yoga teachers are humans. And just because we place them on pedestals because of their exceptional knowledge or their expansive consciousness doesn't eradicate their humanity. In my experience, when I have had, you know, incredible yoga teachers or spiritual teachers cross the lines with me because it's happened because I'm a woman on planet earth and I'm engaging men on planet earth. This happens, you know, and it's not just relegated to heterosexual binary engaging, but this is my experience of it. And anytime it's happened when a big shot yoga teacher has crossed the line, people who haven't been accused of anything and would totally shock you, or when big, big wig spiritual leaders and philanthropic leaders have crossed the line with me, which again, would shock the hell out of you, I take it as a very personal dynamic that is there to teach both of us lessons. I don't take it out into the public sphere and make a big hullabaloo in the press 
while victimizing myself to it and attracting attention because of it, it's a very personal one-on-one -on -one lesson. And the thing is, is that we are all humans. So when when men and women are coming together, whether it's a, a male, you know, a, a teacher-student relationship or not, we cannot pretend that those dynamics are not going to come into the picture. This is not to excuse the stepping over the line, but it is to say, like, A, these dynamics of this type of very physical asana being practiced and taught to women because historically yoga was a practice that was taught by men to men. So this was not really coming up in the same way that it's coming up this, these days. So this is really only in the past hundred years max that we're dealing with this. And that dynamic, the newness of that dynamic does not trump hundreds and thousands of years of primal urges, biological imperatives, and the ways that men and women are wired differently. And you know, I don't care if you think that gender is a social construct, that's adorable. <laughs> there are actual biological realities and biological truths that are being animated and expressed through us. And it gets very confusing when we're dealing with these close relationships. Again, this is not to excuse anyone, but I've noticed when stuff like this comes up with my teachers or people who I put on pedestals, that is for us to deal with. That That is a learning lesson for the both of us. And that's not for me to go outside of the relationship and go tattling to get attention. It's for me to stay within that relationship and to step into the challenge that I've been called to speak my truth, to hold this person accountable with compassion and love, again, to not cancel them and to not demonize them as evil and discount their entire body of work. What we're dealing with here is the fact that we choose to put people on pedestals. Like, look at what's, what happened in the Me Too thing. Generally, the people who were being accused of misconduct were famous, right? So what we need to look at is our choice to disempower ourselves and to put people on pedestals and to put them above us and to give our power away to them and to then shame them when they disappoint us and our projections and our expectations by actually being human and having human flaws and having human shadows. And how we choose to handle those personal relationships is up to us. Like I said, for me, I like to deal with those reflections one on one. We don't know what someone's karma is with their teacher. We don't know what their authentic alchemical dynamic is and what the lessons are that are coming up. And again, please do not misunderstand me. This is not to say that it is okay to cross the line. It is to say that we are all human and we are all trying to figure this out, each one of us. And stuff comes up, stuff will come up for teachers, stuff will come up for supposedly spiritual people. You know, I don't care if you're enlightened or not. If you're in a body, in this third dimensional reality, then you are dealing with shadows straight up. And, you know, I really think it's important for us to look at the expectations that we place upon these teachers to be superhuman, to not have human shadows, and then how, you know, the stuff that we protect up upon them when they disappoint us by being human. But then there's this other piece of discounting the entire bodies of work, of spiritual teachers, of artists. Like, you know, you look at the Osho documentary, the Rajneesh documentary, which sure was entertaining. But after that, a lot of people separated themselves from their love of Osho, that changed their opinion. But that documentary didn't have anything to do with his teachings. It didn't give his point of view. It was all the salacious, gossipy shit. And you read his books, those those words stand the test of time. Like you practice kundalini yoga for 20 years, your own lived experience will stand the test of time. I've been practicing Ashtanga yoga for God knows how long, 20 years, 21 years. And that practice stands the test of time. So what if the teachers are human? If we're going to discount entire bodies of work because people disappoint us, then we're not gonna have any songs to listen to, any movies to watch, any television shows to watch, any plays to watch, any spiritual practices to incorporate into our own lives. It's just not sane. And I'm also seeing this in the political discourse. And you know, I mean, this is such a freaky situation right now but I'm noticing where people will completely discount experiences and data and information that comes from publications that they are so quick to demonize as right-wing or conservative-leaning 
it might be happening in, in reverse as well. And this canceling stuff has just gotten so out of hand, especially given that I think we can all agree that there really isn't a free press anymore. And, you know, there's no one publication that we can count on for the entire truth. I've delved into this as a journalist really wholeheartedly and looked at different publications and different independent journalists and there are different agendas going on and everyone has their blind spots. So right now it's a very weird time in our culture where we need to be going the extra mile and doing our due diligence and digging deeper and looking into multiple sources from both sides of all issues so that we can determine the truth for ourselves. And to this end, I'm inviting us to not completely discount facts and information that are coming from publications that you or the people that you follow have told you to deem on the wrong side. It's too reductive these days. It just isn't, it's not gonna work. We cannot be giving our blind allegiance to any publication anymore, left or right. So this is the through line that I'm seeing in this like cancel culture that has gone totally off the rails. And I guess I'm inviting us to just have a little bit more compassion and spaciousness, A, for people's humanity, especially the people that we're putting on pedestals, B, stop putting people on pedestals. Stop giving our power away. You know, like from what I heard, and again, this is secondhand information, but my friend who decided to ditch Kundalini Yoga altogether because of this book, she said that the teacher in question wouldn't let the women leave the cult. And, and what popped to mind was the Louis C.K. incident of when he was jerking off in front of other women and they couldn't leave. It was like he didn't tie them up. Do they not have hands to like, reach for a doorknob and turn it and walk out the door, these women who couldn't leave. I mean, I don't know the specifics. If they were tied up in, in a basement in bondage, then I discount everything that I'm saying. But I find these narratives to be super disempowering for women where we're so allegedly so infantilized that we can't take care of ourselves. We can't leave a room if someone's behaving in a way that doesn't jive with us. We can't leave a cult if our cult leader is behaving in a way that doesn't jive with us. So I don't buy into these fundamentally disempowering stories. And I don't buy into the, any of the disempowerment of putting a teacher on a pedestal so that when he crosses the line with me, that my whole life is over and I'm completely shattered and the whole discipline is destroyed and I can never practice it again. And I'm a victim and he's a perpetrator. It doesn't work like that. Life is way more complicated and way more nuanced. And I'm really inviting all of us to up our compassion and tolerance muscles right now, like in a huge, huge way, like quantum leap wise, to really expand our capacity to hold space for other people's humanity, for other people's shadows. You know, the only way that we learn our lessons is through making mistakes. And, you know, I'm someone who's walking a very transformational path. So I live this all the time. And there's a certain mortification in it. And I'm sure I've been canceled in, you know, too many communities to count. And I give so much thanks and I have so much appreciation for the people who stick it out with me and are holding my best interests and are rooting for me and allow me to make these mistakes so that I can learn and grow and integrate and evolve into, you know, the best iteration of myself that isn't going to come if I don't make mistakes and if people don't allow me the leeway to make mistakes. Even as a teacher, even as a coach, even as a, a leader, what have you, you know? Um, and no, I'm not a Yogi Bhajan, but you get that this is a metaphor. So I'm inviting us to expand our, expand our capacity to hold space for people's humanity, for people to make mistakes, to not cancel them, to not discount their entire body of work because they've indicated some shadowy stuff or some humanity. And especially to like, just stop with the discounting and the, and the canceling, like on all fronts and get curious and do your due diligence and I realize I'm covering a bunch of different topics here but like the canceling is the through line and the invalidating of entire bodies of work of entire publications of important articles and truths that are coming through because we've deemed the sources unworthy of our attention because of you know whatever bigotry or intolerance we're projecting onto them or because of the humanity and the shadows that they've demonstrated in their own evolutionary path.
Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for remembering that every word matters, that you are omniscopic amazingness, and that critical thinking rocks. Have a rocking day. Have a phenomenal day. I don't know, that repetition of rock just felt a little clunky. <laughs> Mwah. Yeah.